This is Brandon Jones with Northwestern University and the University of Cincinnati. In this series of lectures, we are going to explore SQLite, and not just the syntax of SQLite or what SQLite is, but how it can be used to make our applications better, more user-friendly, and higher quality. A lot of times in class, people uh, tell me about an idea that they have, and they say, well, uh, maybe I should put the data in the cloud, maybe I should put it locally on the device, what should I do? Well, here's the advantages of each. Uh, server, web, cloud, whatever you want to call it, the, the benefit of that is that you get the same view on multiple devices if you own multiple devices. And this is something that people expect today. If I update a document on my phone, I expect to see that same update on my tablet, on my computer, so on and so forth. But the downside is that server, web, cloud storage alone is not available offline unless we make it offline. The other disadvantage is it's going to require a network call to get the data. So what about uh, storing data on the device? Well, we're going to have higher performance because we have the data locally. We don't have to make a network call. As a matter of fact, the iOS guidelines indicate that if we have an autocomplete, we should use local data. Now, what is an autocomplete? That's this concept where we begin typing. Uh, you see I've started to type Magnolia in a little drop down. Uh, appears with text that matches what we're typing. I can continue to type Magnolia and we can say Grand, and you see as I start typing Grandiflora, it selects that. So we have autocomplete performance. It's going to be a lot better. As a matter of fact, in the Plant Places app, there are 3,000 plants that uh, can possibly be in this autocomplete. So that's a pretty good amount of data, even though it's all text data. We want to keep that locally. Now, another thought is the device gives us the ability to go offline and store data offline and sync data offline. Uh, I have a couple of examples of that. First, uh, one of the more enjoyable trips I've taken recently was to the uh, Reykjavik Botanical Gardens in Iceland. Uh, I did not have network data in Iceland, as I usually don't when I'm outside of the U.S. Uh, I could, I just, uh, you know would rather not, to be honest with you. I'd rather remain off the grid. N needless to say, I GPSed all of these plants in Iceland, a place I probably either won't be again in my life or won't be for a while. But nonetheless, a lot of these plants are plants that maybe I've seen before, uh, just not at this location. And some are new pr plants. Uh, Gold Mound Spirea, that's one that I've seen before in the United States. So uh, here is this plant in northern Kentucky and also in Reykjavik. Uh, but on the other hand, we can go out and we can find a new plant. Uh, and I'm just going to take a guess here. Uh, that one I believe I've seen. Um, don't think I saw this one before. That one's probably new. Uh, so nonetheless, I was able to add, uh, okay, that one's in Nova Scotia, Glasgow. Uh, and this would be Iceland here. Yeah, that's Iceland right there. So you see, I was able to add all of these while my phone was off the grid. And so that's another advantage of autocomplete. Take a look when I select a pre-existing plant. We have Magnolia, Grandiflora, Southern Magnolia, and then I can enter a uh, location if I want. But now let me change this to a Semina Triloba. I have a Semina Triloba in the database, but what I don't have is the cultivar Susquehanna. And pardon me if I misspelled that. Susquehanna, I should have picked Allegheny. Uh, I misspelled it, but okay, you get the idea. Susque Susquehanna pawpaw. This is one that's not currently in the database. Watch what happens when I tab away. What it will do is it will, in just a moment, bring me to a screen where I can add this as a new plant completely offline. So that way, if I see a new plant when I'm out of the country, uh, it's something that I can still add. And then as soon as I connect to Wi-Fi, uh, it will synchronize this with the plantplaces.com website. So which do we want, server or device? Well, uh, both, actually. We just have to figure out how we want to synchronize them well. OK, so. Um, where do we want where do we tend to store data well while we're running the app it's just in random access memory we'll lose it when we power off uh, file if you're thinking of storing images 
store them in a file, and then store the file location in a database. And again, if I take a picture of a, of a plant, uh, that's typically how I'll do it. I'll store the image on the SD card, then the location to that image in the database. And then the database is structured data. So it's data that has a form, and it's data that can be queried. In other words, we can select pieces of data out of it. Okay, so this brings us to SQLite. SQLite is the database that is available to us uh, on the device, and it is, only, it is not meant to be a fully relational database, but really just a local cache or a local copy of database, a uh, local copy of data. Uh, that's really the idea for SQLite. The central storage of data should be on the cloud. This is just what we need uh, to keep us local. So I have a few more slides from here. We'll take a look at those as we start to build our database, uh, but this will serve as an overview of where we're going next. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna consider how to make our database and when to call the database and when to start inserting data into the database. For our purposes, we're going to, uh, we're going to populate this data in the database from a JSON stream of data. Uh, and then we're gonna use that to kind of preload this autocomplete uh, text field, text view, which is something I would recommend for you as well. If you're doing an autocomplete, consider preloading it with data as soon as the user uh, opens the app or the first time the user installs the app. So that's what we're gonna look at. I'll have all of these together in a playlist. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.